What's going on guys? This is Chris Model Academics and we are here with Hyundai because they have an all new car they're going to share with us. It is the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq. What's so special about this car is that it comes in a hybrid version, a plug-in hybrid version, as well as an all electric version too. So let's take a look. So what exactly is the Ioniq? Just a little bit of introduction. Uh, we have a lot of slides this morning. Um, Don't worry, we will put you through all that. For starters, Ionic is the first car offered in three distinct electrified powertrains, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and electric, all on a single dedicated vehicle platform. So we'll take just a moment to see how this vehicle was constructed. The standard hybrid's powertrain features a 1.6 liter direct injected Atkinson cycle four-cylinder engine that delivers 104 horsepower and an estimated 109 pound-feet of torque. The electric motor provides an estimated 32 kilowatts or 43 horsepower with an estimated maximum torque of 125 pound-feet and is powered by a 1.56 kilowatt hour lithium ion polymer battery. Combined, the engine and electric motor make an estimated total output of 139 horsepower. A standard self-jump start system eliminates the need for AAA's battery chargers, and while most hybrids have a continuously variable transmission, the Ionic Hybrid uses a six-speed double-clutch example that allows for a more engaging driving experience. The Ionic Plug-in Hybrid can travel more than 25 miles on all-electric power alone, and is powered by a more potent 8.9 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion polymer battery. Its electric motor is larger as well, delivering an estimated 45 kilowatts or 60 horsepower, and it has the same DCT as the standard hybrid. Finally, the Ionic Electric uses a 28 kilowatt hour lithium ion polymer battery and can go approximately 124 miles per charge. Its motor makes an estimated 88 kilowatts or 120 horsepower and 215 pound feet of torque through a single speed reduction gear transmission. An 80% charge can be completed in about 20 minutes using a level 3, 100 kilowatt fast charger, but you can also charge via a standard household electrical socket too. It'll just take a bit longer. Because the batteries of all three versions are packaged beneath the rear seats, interior volume is uncompromised with a total of 122.7 cubic feet in the hybrid and 120 cubic feet in the plug-in and electric versions, despite their larger batteries. Hyundai designed the exterior with clean, sophisticated, and modern lines, and extended use of aluminum keeps it light. It has a hatchback-like profile that not only gives the Ionic a sporty look, but also boosts aerodynamics for less drag when driving. Inside, the cockpit is stylish, and the controls appear to be well sorted for the driver. Renewable materials are used, and the addition of an electronic shifter and parking brake increase space between the driver and front passenger. Safety technology includes emergency braking, lane departure warning, lane change assist, and blind spot warning with rear cross traffic alert. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Blue Link are available as well, all of which are displayed on a 7-inch touchscreen. A neat addition is Alexa and Google Home integration that will allow owners to remotely lock the doors, start and stop charging, and start the engine and set the climate control from the comfort of their living rooms. So while all of that makes for a nice car, I'm sure you're wondering how it drives. Auto Academics spent a bit of time in both the hybrid and the electric versions of the car, and they each made a good first impression. Contrary to all of the construction going on in our staging area, the Ionic Electric was quiet, smooth, and had a premium feel. And although power was nothing to write home about, we have to keep in mind that this is an affordable EV, not a Model S. The hybrid caught a little more of my attention. Like the electric model, the suspension is tuned to be more compliant than sporty, and because this car is a compact, space is at a premium for larger drivers. Brake feel is on the softer side, but the regenerative brakes are easy to modulate without feeling grabby. Power is decent, and there's a noticeable difference in the car's driving traits when the sport button is pressed. The interior is quiet, and the Ionic Hybrid displayed a range of over 500 miles on a full tank. Last but certainly not least, the six-speed dual-clutch transmission was a treat, especially in a car like this. When in sport mode, it transformed the docile commuter into a car that actually wanted to be driven. Within its limits, obviously. Its real shifts, looking at you, CVT, are, dare I say, energetic and even fairly quick. Yet it doesn't make you pay for that responsiveness with an unrefined feel when driving casually. Hyundai seems to have made a good transmission choice, and Auto Academics is praising them for it. At the end of the day, our experience with the all-new Hyundai Ionic was positive, and we look forward to getting one to live with and drive for review. I'm Chris from Auto Academics. Thanks for watching.